Power stations the last 10 years or so have made a huge impact on preparedness because just a little while ago, there really weren't many options to get power to store a little bit of extra power. And these days there's, you know, 50 million different types of power stations. And as cool as those power stations are, they can get pretty expensive. You've got the smaller ones that may be a couple hundred bucks, but you've got the larger ones, like the one I've got back behind here, which is an AFRI, and it's actually one of the lower cost ones. Uh, it's, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars. You've got the Jackeries that are even more expensive than that. So today I want to talk about some of the ways we can save money instead of getting one of those power stations, some of the things we can do ourselves. And that's where this Life PO4 battery comes into play. This is a 100 amp hour Life PO4 battery, so it's got 1280 watt hours. And the, the type of battery you get, I think in preparedness is less important than say if you were going to be using it on a daily basis in an RV or something like that. In preparedness, we're going to be using this in emergencies. And a lot of the times it may just be sitting on the shelf. So the brand you get, I think is less important in preparedness than it is for some other applications. This is a go kilowatt hour. This is a really uh, inexpensive battery. Uh, it's got the monitor up on top here, which is kind of nice in a situation like we're gonna be talking about today because it lets you know how charged or discharged this is. You've got a couple other kinds like the Ridotos, the Lie Times, uh, a few different brands that uh, are, are good enough in preparedness. And another thing with these Life PO4 batteries, this is the newest technology, the safest technology, because these Life PO4 batteries have a battery management system inside of them that will protect from, you know, basically them exploding and stuff, right? The over voltage, the under voltage, they'll, they'll protect the battery from getting damaged. These have a really long lifespan and that's why some of the lower cost ones are just fine in preparedness because these batteries aren't going to break down you know, a, a day or two after you get it. I mean, it's possible, but most likely it's going to be the lifespan of this battery that's lower compared to some of the expensive ones. In preparedness, that doesn't matter as much because you're thinking about a disaster where you want to make sure you have something that's going to work. And this is going to work for at some amount of time, maybe not as long as one of the expensive ones, but it's going to, it's going to work just fine for your needs. But the Life PO4 batteries are fantastic and they are the, the best batteries available in situations like this. And today I want to talk about some ways you can use this that and get the same results that you would get out of a power station. And the first one right here is using an inverter. And there are all sorts of uh, wattages of inverters. This one is a pure sine wave, which is probably what you'll want, but it's not necessary all the time for uh, you know electronics like fans and lights and things like that. But for sensitive electronics, you want a pure sine wave inverter. Now this, uh, basically you just take this, you can have these alligator connectors like this, or you can actually plug it into the battery with these lugs right here, with lugs like this right here, and plug those in and then have them hooked up there. But for the purposes of this video and just to get something running quickly, these alligator clips will work just fine. They aren't as efficient as getting it screwed in and, and everything, everything nice and tight on there. But you can see, you just plug that in right there and this turns on and you are good to go. And this battery also has an app as well. And it's also, like I said, it's got the top right here where you can tell exactly what it's pulling. So the current is 2.5 amps. Right now we're at 57% uh, the temperature. So it's got all of this information that is nice and convenient that you would have on a power station. You've also got battery monitors and things like that you could hook up on my power station back there. I've got a battery monitor hooked up and I've got a Victron on my other one. But you can see this is a nice and convenient, easy way to get a little bit of AC power, have a couple of AC ports right here. And you know, the same thing as a power station. Now, as far as DC supplies, what you would want to do is take something like this connector right here 
this cigarette lighter port and hook this up to the battery. We'll go ahead and just hook this up right now. All right, you just screw those in right there. And I should mention too that this has got a 20 amp fuse on it. With these right here, this should probably be fused as well. Uh, just because you just want to be safe. You don't, you want, you don't want to burn the house down. These batteries have all the protections in here, but just to be safe, you want them out here as well. And that's what I've got on here. Now this will give you DC power. So we've got the inverter that will give us, you know, AC power for lights and things like that, but you need DC power and you could get one of these adapters right here, which is like 10 bucks and you throw it in there and not only will this little adapter, and I'll make sure and leave a link below to the, what this one is, but it will tell you the voltage of the battery. And this says 13.2, and on this battery uh, monitor right here, it says 13.3, so it's fairly accurate. And with this, this gives you the options for plugging in a couple of USBs, a couple of USB type Cs, whatever you have right here, uh, whatever type of plug you have, you can also plug this in. Another thing that may be something you would want to do or would be convenient and nice cost saving thing is with this DC plugged in right here, you could keep this plugged in and you've also got the inverters like this inverter right here from Best Tech, which is nice and convenient because it plugs into this cigarette lighter port right here. So you could take this uh, little inverter right here and turn it on and you have power and you've also got a couple of USBs right there as well. Now the AC, if you're using an inverter, it's going to take up more energy than using DC and we'll go into a little bit more about that later. And also with these cigarette lighter ports, you're limited to as far as how many watts you can take out of this. So you're limited to probably around 200 watts that this will take. Uh, this fuse right here is 20 amps, which is around 200, 200 or so watts, uh, and this inverter is 300, so uh, you, you probably wouldn't want to use all of this, otherwise you'll blow this, this fuse right here. But if you just have small things like lights and fans and things like that, you could use something like this to get the job done. Or the best thing to do would be to start using, uh, another cost saving tip is try not to use AC whenever possible. So not try not to use these inverters. These are going to take up a lot of energy that could be used elsewhere. So if you've got a DC fan, like my uh, Iceco refrigerator back there is a DC refrigerator. I plug that into a DC port like this. It uses about 50 watts at, over the course of a day, it uses about 300 watt hours. So um, really, really low. On AC, it's gonna use more than that. So any appliance that you can think of that you could use DC power, even if you plug it into the positive and negative, uh, you're going to, it's gonna save you a whole lot of energy. Sometimes that's just not possible though. You need lamps, you need lights and things like that. So you can use this, this AC power with one of these inverters right here. Also with these inverters, I think it's important over time that we have different sizes because a 1500 watt inverter is gonna take a whole lot more energy to run than a 300 watt inverter like this one. And also the brand sort of matters with this as well as far as how efficient each one of these are. So uh, make sure and do your research on the inverters because a little bit of power you have, you wanna make sure it goes where it needs to go. But if you're just starting out and you're just trying to get something going, uh, you know, it, going the cheap route is not a bad thing. That's the benefit, one of the benefits of this as well, is that it allows you to piece this thing together. Rather than spending seven, $800 on a one-time purchase with these power stations, you can buy a battery for a couple hundred dollars. You can buy an inverter for a hundred dollars, some of the connections and things like that, 10 bucks here and there and you can sort of piece this out and over time, you'll have all of this stuff put together. So it really is a, a more feasible way to get some of this stuff done rather than having a power station. Now the power stations are you know, nice and pretty and, and convenient, whereas this you've got cords everywhere, but you can put together your own little power bank. I've done that, I've got one in the garage that basically right now it's used to power my motion lights 
but I've also got an inverter in there. I put it together just like a power station because in a disaster or an emergency, I can unplug those motion lights and I can use that anywhere I need to, just like I would a power station. You can get a bin or whatever you need to do, however you need to do it, and just throw all of this stuff into a bin and have it there and ready to go. Like I said, these alligator clips, it, it, you, could, you saw how quickly I was able to attach the inverter, turn on some lights, turn on a fan, whatever you need to do. Now all of this stuff together, it really depends on the parts, can get, a, you know, it can get up to the point where you're paying almost as much as one of these low cost power stations. The benefit of doing it this way though, is that you can, if something does break down, if you get one of these low cost power stations for six, $700, the odds are eventually, you know, at some point those are gonna break down. Something inside of that is going to fail. And if you buy a bunch of cheap stuff like this, if that battery fails, if that inverter fails, you're spending $100 to replace that inverter rather than the $600, $700 for one of those power stations. If the battery does mess up, you are spending a couple hundred dollars rather than that six, $700. Another benefit is if you want to expand something like this, like you've got this Life PO4 battery that's got 1,280 watt hours. If you want to expand this to two of these batteries and bring that up to 2,500 watt hours, then you can, you can do that with this. With one of those power stations, you're stuck at what you have unless you get one of the expansions or do like I did, which I'll, I'll go through in my next video and added a couple of these to use as backup power. Uh, that's a different video though, that's the next video. But my whole point is there are a lot of options when you go this route and you can start off with basically this, these three things right here, uh, a $200 battery, a $10, 10, 20 bucks, so $220 and you are good to go with some DC power. At 50, 60 bucks, you've got a little bit of AC power. So 300 bucks, you've got some, th you've got everything that you need to have AC power and DC power and, and supply, keep your cell phones charged up. Have a light or a fan or something like that on a couple lights and a couple fans. Uh, keep some things charged up in a disaster or an emergency and you're good to go. Another thing, which I'm not gonna get into the solar power and the charge controllers too much in this video, but you could do that as well. You can get a charge controller, a solar panel, and, and hook it straight up to this. That's more of the battery bank uh, setup where you're actually putting a system together that is going to work like a power station. But if you wanted to keep this charged up, you've got a couple options as well as, as far as charging goes. You've got something like this, which is a small trickle charger, and I believe this is like two amps. This is what I use in the winter to keep my riding lawnmower battery charged up. And then it, if I need to, I can put this on here. You can keep this plugged in to the wall uh, all the time, and this will just constantly trickle charge this. You've also got the battery chargers that are 10, 20, 30 amps, which would work pretty well. And these, again, same type of situation. This is a really low cost uh, power, uh, Life PO4 charger, uh, 10 amps, and this sucker gets really hot. So this is not something that you would want to keep plugged in all the time with one of these batteries. Uh, but it is something that you, it would charge it up a whole lot quicker. Now in a grid down event, you're probably not going to have AC charging and you could use one of these with your gener, if you have a generator, you can use your generator for AC power during the day, charge up this battery, and then you could use this silent battery at night. The one thing about that is if you, if you do have a generator or a generator inverter, like I have a, a Predator 3500, you would want a, one of the chargers that is at least 30, 40 amps, because at 10 amps, this is gonna take nine or 10 hours to charge from zero. At 20 amps, you're looking at about four or five hours. So if you could get something like this charged in a couple hours, that's what you would wanna do on an inverter and use less fuel uh, to get this charged up. So the type of charger that you get it, that has more amps that will charge this quicker, the better if you are going that route. And you know if you can afford it, just everyday use too, because you can just top this off, get it done in a couple hours, and then use it. Otherwise, 
I think this little trickle charger is a really good idea if you're just using this, if you're just having this sit on the shelf and waiting for it, a disaster or emergency, you get that, you get this little $20 trickle charger uh, and just keep this thing topped off and you are good to go. So with that, that's just a, a few things, uh, ideas that I wanted to give you for uh, if you can't afford a generator or maybe not right now you're saving up, there are still things you can do. And one of these batteries is absolutely safe. It's a whole lot safer than the, you know, the lead acid batteries or the marine batteries that we used to talk about in preparedness all the time. These can be in, you can keep these indoors. You can put them on their side. You know, you can put them however you want to keep them. You're not going to damage these batteries and it's not going to mess with anything, which is really nice. It's for storage and things like that. And the battery management system and all the safety features in here make these absolutely ideal for preparedness. You can use them indoors. These are basically the same thing that, all of this right here is the, the same thing that you would get in a power station. It's just the, you know, the separate parts that you would, and they're a little bit bigger, but it's all basically the same thing. So uh, just a, a really good idea. If you don't wanna spend all that money on a power station, get yourself a, a Life PO4 battery, one of these DC outputs, uh, maybe an inverter or two, and a, a way to charge it, and you'd be good to go in a disaster or an emergency. At any rate, like I said, I mentioned earlier that I have my, my battery bank over here set up to where I didn't want to spend $1,000 on an expansion battery that you can get for these power stations. So I did it myself with a couple of Life PO4 batteries. And I will go into more detail in the next video how I put that together. Uh, and it's abs it working absolutely fantastic. But that will be coming out in a couple days. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure and hit that bell icon to get notified when I upload that video. And, and I'll go through that. It's a really a, another great way to save some money and get a whole lot more energy than the, just this 1,280 watt hours right here uh, and be able to do a whole lot more. At any rate, if that's it for today, everyone. If you've got any questions or comments, make sure and leave them below. Take care and prepare. Hopefully we'll see you in the next video and we will talk to you everyone later.